Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Working it out. Hey everybody, this is Shane Smith and one of our saints, and this is Real Life Real Music. Real Life Real Music Radio with your host, Kyle Hutton. So, uh, listen, I have to say, I mean, let's just get this out of the way right up front. I almost feel like it was false advertising. I should have said Shane Smith and a saint. That's right. Shane Smith and a saint. But I'm going to let you tell the story about the other saints and uh, why they were unable to join us tonight. Yeah, yeah for sure. We, <laughs> we're, like, we're like the king of, of uh, mechanical problems with vehicles. And uh, we ran into one of those again today with our bus. And uh, anyway, so we had to leave a couple of the guys back back in Austin. And, and me and Bennett just took it over. So I hope y'all are cool with that. It's going to well, be I, definitely more of like the singer-songwriter thing, I think. I was going to say, I know it's been three years, but uh, you, I, I'm sure you remember that this show is... is it's about the stories as much as it is about the songs. And I know we have a whole lot that we need to catch up on tonight, but uh, why don't you guys just pick one you want to kick us off with, tell us about it, and let's get this thing going. I didn't tell you this. The radio show is edited for rebroadcast, okay? So you'll never hear Shane digging down in his man purse here to get whatever it was. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not a man purse. It's a it's a satchel. <laughs> Indiana Sorry. Jones has one. Yeah, well, that's right. That's right, and he's extremely cool. Sorry, uh, but you will see that exchange on the video podcast because <laughs> we don't edit it. So if you want to see it in its entirety, check it out. One more time, Shane Smith. Y'all mm -hmm. give it up. Like he said, uh, a lot has changed in the last three years for us. We released a record that was called Geronimo uh, right at about three or three and a half years ago. And uh, seriously, I can't say, I say this every single night, but I can't say it enough. Um, thank you all, like, sincerely from the bottom of our hearts to everybody uh, that downloaded even a single song or purchased a CD of, uh, of Geronimo because it, it made such a massive difference for us as a band. Uh, we were at one of those places that, I mean, I was like at one of the lowest points in my life uh, professionally with, like I, I literally had a check bounce on me, one of my, one of the uh, last checks to pay for that record. And I haven't told many people that, but literally that happened and I was just like, oh my God, what am I doing? And, uh, and just to see what happened within the last three years, and obviously, I mean, we, we, we're grinders. We've been grinding it out dur during that entire time. I think we played maybe like four states or something like that before we released that record and uh, then went on to play, at, I think we played like probably 42 states or something like that in the last three years or, or year and a half or so. And so it's, uh, it's just been a crazy, crazy ordeal and I genuinely appreciate it. So thank you all so much. Um, it's been a, an amazing process. And this song was written back before any of that and it's about being away from home and it's about uh, you know, the struggles of touring, but I literally wrote it before I knew anything about it. So it makes more sense to me personally uh, than it ever has before. And it was also written for my wife before she was my wife. So uh, this is called Quite Like You, though.
still get chills when I see your face and daydreams out on the interstate wakes my mind as the colors fade I still get chills when I see your face oh So, so three years ago when you were here and, and we did this show, if I'm remembering right, Geronimo had just come out. I think so. Yeah, because I think we, we got lucky enough to walk out of here with some vinyls that night of, of, of the brand new record. And so, uh, what, man, what, gosh, where do I start with the questions? But what, what, 
other than not bouncing checks is the most obvious difference. <laughs> because the cool thing is, man, uh, uh, we get to watch as fans that, that, I mean, you guys are out playing huge festivals. You're playing in front of huge crowds. Uh, you didn't come in this time and set up merch by yourself. You know what I mean? So the operation is expanding, which is great. And so uh, what, what are some of the things that, that maybe are, are the biggest, most positive changes for you as opposed to three years ago? Um, honestly, like here in the more recent fut- uh, past, I would say we've, we've had so much more balance at home, uh, like with just like our personal lives and with our families and our, our friends and people that literally we haven't hardly been around for the last three years, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, that's just such a intense thing whenever you do that for uh, a couple years in a row. And uh, that's been the most amazing thing for me, and I think probably for most of the guys, honestly, is just getting to have a life again outside yeah. of uh, being away. And um, I don't know. It's uh, it's just been so much easier. Yeah. Well, <laughs> paint, like, paint that picture for us. I mean, so three years ago, like, like how many dates a year were you all out pounding out in order to try to achieve some of the things that you've now achieved? How many dates a year were you guys doing? I mean, we were probably doing around 100 and, uh, I don't know, 190, 180 shows, but then, like, travel days as well. So, like, you know, I mean, probably well over 200, I would think, something like that. So, um, but, you know, anyway, it's just, it was just a, just a crazy time, but it was, it was incredible. I mean, we, we got to play in front of a lot of people that, uh, uh, we never would have been able to. We went out and played in, you know, Chicago and New York and uh, and Seattle and Portland and a lot of places. And and actually have, for the first time ever this year, we're starting to see like like tons of festival offers and stuff that are like really good offers yeah, yeah. coming in from literally like all over the country. And so, like doing fly dates and stuff like that a lot more often than we ever used to. And it's just a cool thing that. You know, a lot of people go through that grind and they, they deal with that and their families deal with that and it like nothing happens with it. You know what I'm saying? And it's yeah. like, and so I just, I think we're super fortunate that, you know, looking back on that, we're, it's actually like looking really up and, and it's just, it's finally paying off, you know? Yeah. And so it's an amazing feeling. So, so, so last time you guys were here, the, the songs on, on Geronimo were, were new, right? right? Yeah. And, and this time, uh, with you being here, there's some new stuff in the works that I've had the privilege to get to hear a little bit of yeah. that you guys, I'm just going to tell you, the new record is going to blow your mind when it comes out. It's amazing. There's there's a song on the new record that talks about that struggle of being gone from your family and being gone from the one that you love. I wonder if we yeah, could yeah. talk you into playing yeah, yeah, for sure, man. that tune off the new record. And are you all okay if we hear some of the new stuff that's going to be coming out tonight? <laughs> It's a pretty sad song. <laughs> but it's it's so good. It's it's a good tune. Yeah, this is uh this is called the hardest part. And um I don't, you know, it's like I don't really have to say much about it. It's just I think the the words say it and uh and uh I think a lot of people uh not just musicians, I mean tons of people. I bet like probably like uh I don't know, 10, 20% of the people in this room travel almost like all the time for a living. So it's like, that's the way it is. That's what you got to do. And uh, I think a lot of people can relate to it, but here we go. It's a photo that you sent me Is it tell me that it snowed You're smiling in the picture When I know you hate the cold And you drive to see your nanny Cause she is losing to her disease and I'm not right there to hold you when your name fell from a reach. And 
being gone is the hardest part it's the hardest part of loving you being gone is the hardest part it's the hardest part of loving you Loving you It's a movie that you mentioned And I say that you should go For weeks you sing its praises when I know you sat alone It's when you tell me that you're broken And something has to change It's knowing no matter what I choose I'll still be throwing one away Being gone is the hardest part It's the hardest part of loving you Being gone is the hardest part It's the hardest part of loving you Loving you And after this life Will I know you Is this my only chance to love you It's thinking years from now and There's a little one at home Will I witness those first steps of faith In a message on a phone I am done It's too damn hard And I can't part from loving you I let it home I made it far And I can't part from loving you Loving you So where where did you I mean like do you remember where you were out on the road when you got the idea for that one or uh, man it's just uh, I usually don't write songs super quick and I'm <laughs> I'm probably like the worst person to do a co-write with uh, <laughs> because it just I don't know it just takes me a while I, I really um, I'm a big fan of like writing stuff that means something like really personal to me uh, that like. You know, if I'm singing it, I know what I'm talking about. I'm not singing someone else's story unless I can, like, directly relate with it and I can truly, like, you know, connect that dot, you know? And, yeah. um, you know, some of the best performers in the world are 
just incredible at that, being able to connect other people's songs to their own lives and stuff like that. And I've always had a hard time with that. And uh, anyways, it's, it, it's something that it takes me a long time, usually with writing and, and, you know, I might write a melody, I might, I'm constantly just recording stuff on, on my phone, you know, yeah. just voice memos and things like that. And I think that was uh, one of those that just over time, you know, it just got put together, so. Gotcha. I, uh, I, I, w I will say though, like the more and more that I'm thinking about that uh, particular one, I think uh, I did have some ideas for it uh, that that were like a long time coming type thing I'd written down. Um, but I actually, I know exactly where I was where I wrote that now that I say that. Uh, I was at a house in Cabo. <laughs> Cabo San Lucas in Mexico, uh, uh, and I was literally sitting in the shower of this bathroom because it was like this huge shower and it had like the best acoustics in the world. And I was out there, um, a friend of mine who's really successful has this house and he had a bunch of songwriters uh, from Ma Nashville over there and I was over there literally just kind of networking and hanging out. And I'd kind of broken off on my own and uh, was writing and that literally that song actually came out in like 15 minutes or something but off of taking ideas that yeah. had happened over time but usually it takes me like forever you know but you know we'd have thought you were in like some motel six in boise idaho or no. something like that when no. you were, but no you were in a in a big shower yeah. in cabo yeah literally yeah. All right. When I when I finally put those pieces together, yeah, that's where I was. <laughs> I love the it. majority of them, yeah, are are in a much worse situation. I love but. it. I love. It. Okay, so now that we've gotten one of the real sad ones out of the way, you want to pick one out that we know they're going to sing along to and stomp their feet and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Let's do. Uh, yeah, y'all can help me sing along. This is a simple chorus. Even if you like, don't know the song, whatever, you'll work it out. It'll be fine. <laughs> This is about probably my favorite city in the world, a town in South Louisiana called New Orleans. And, uh, and my harmonica holder keeps breaking. But uh, no, I truly, I think this place is just incredibly special and I love going there any chance I possibly can and this is kind of like my tribute to that. And I'm also, just like I'm not good at writing songs quick, I'm not good at naming songs, so I just called it New Orleans. <laughs> Couldn't really come up with anything cool. I'm pretty vanilla when it comes to the song names. <laughs> Sawing down the line, 
It's sunny there in the Congo Square where the never dies. Where the never dies. In New Orleans. In New Orleans. Okay, so before before I forget to do this, because I, I have forgotten to do this before, and that is we need to do a liner to kick off the radio show and the podcast, all right? So however you guys want to do it, uh, this is Shane Smith and the Saint, or h- however you want to do it, <laughs> and this is real life, real music, so that's your, yeah. however you want to introduce yourself, and now? this is real life, real music, and then you guys are just going to go nuts, Okay. I think they can handle that part. The question is, can, yeah, you, y'all handle, got it. can you handle your part? I'm usually terrible at these things, too. We'll work it out. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Shane Smith and one of our saints. And you're listening to Real Life, Real Music. <laughs> All right. Now... He remembered the liner from three years ago when we were just uh, radio, but now we're a video podcast, so they're not just listening to it, right? So this and, is and this real life. is real life, real music. All right. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Working it out. Hey, everybody! This is Shane Smith and one of our saints, and this is real life, real music. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You nailed it. You had a great. Uh, it, it was. You had a great radio voice starting on that intro too, man. That was awesome. Hey everybody. <laughs> oh hey. How are you? Okay. So, all right. Thank you, and thank you guys for your help on that. So before we get the weather, before we get too deep in the set, and I run the risk of of uh, you having already played the answer to this question, I want to ask you a question that I, I have found over the last, you know, I don't know, a couple of years that I, I love to hear the answer um, from, from our guests. And, and that is if, if somebody that had never heard your music before only got to hear one song that's in your catalog to date, which song would you pick and, and why? And you only get to pick one. You can't pull the my songs are my babies and all that. No, you have to pick one. 
one song? Um, he has to pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cover song. No. Um, uh, man, I would say maybe uh, Right Side of the Ground. That's a song that uh, I just think a lot of, I, I think that's one of those songs that a lot of people relate to. It doesn't really fall under a genre. It's not like, you know, it's not uh, surrounded by any particular genre. I think that's it's just kind of a universal song that a lot of people can relate to. So, well, Can we hear it? Yeah, there you go. I should have just. I been can alley oop the ball to you, but you gotta. Right. You, you gotta yeah. put it in. Not good at these. Things. <laughs> I think he's doing great, don't you guys? Yeah. Are y'all hanging in there? I think they're doing good. All right, good. Just getting started. Then it just reminded me this was written in a really bad motel. <laughs> I think it was in Dodge City, Kansas. They don't have the best ones. like I've been known to do Though time to time my mind may run to you On the darker nights that get me through Cause I've spent time on the wrong side church door and I've held hands with the devil in a more than just one town I bet by 40 my stories make you question me but I hope by 40 I'm on the right side of the ground yeah.
And in my dreams were somewhere that it snows In North Dakota, maybe Ohio And I need to leave but I cannot let go Cause I don't know if I'll be Thank you all very much. Yeah, that's a great song. Wow. All right, so uh, hometown Terrell, Texas, is that? Uh, that's right. <laughs> East Dallas, boy. That's right. Is that it, where you spent all of your formative childhood years? Yeah, so I, uh, up until I was like a teenager, pretty much, I lived in Terrell, Texas, and then uh, moved like 20 minutes down the road to Kaufman, Texas, and right. that's where... I uh, went to junior high and high school in Kaufman, and then I lived in Tyler, Texas for two years after that. Yeah, Tyler. And then, uh, it is great. And then uh, went down to Austin. I followed my uh, girlfriend at the time, wife now, uh, down to Austin, and uh, we've been living there ever since. And that's where I met Bennett here. Uh, I uh, give it up for my boy. So I had the hottest gig in town at the time, and I was playing Thursdays. It was a four-hour uh, margarita happy hour at El Arroyo. <laughs> and uh, anyways, I, I, uh, there was a group of, uh, of uh, guys and girls that were sitting in front of me, and like right in front of me from where my PA and all my stuff was. We would like tote around all of our own stuff everywhere and we would have amps and they were unpowered speakers and so, oh, yeah. and none of the amps were in rack cases. We were just <laughs> carrying around random like amps. And uh, anyways, but uh, this girl was like, hey, my brother's playing, uh, you know, over on West Campus, you should come check him out. And I was like, okay. And I literally was driving home that night and I had zero intentions of going to the show. I was really tired and uh, I probably was gonna fail a test or something miserably the next day and I just uh, I needed to study or do something. And I literally like turned my truck around like in, in con on Congress, like one of the main streets in Austin. And uh, for some reason went back uh, to that show and it's a good buddy of ours that was playing, uh, a guy named uh, Drew Fish, Drew Fish Band. And um, anyways, Bennett was playing fiddle uh, for him and uh, met Bennett and met Drew and met all of them and then one thing led to another and we started playing shows together and uh, literally that was like what started all of it pretty much and 
he and I just started playing tons of shows together. And uh, well, and I wasn't actually. So he invited me. He was like, "Hey, what's up, dude? Cool, you play fiddle. You should come chill at my house sometime, and we'll jam." And I was like, "No way, this guy. Is, I'm not. Who is this guy?" But he's like, "But I have a studio at my house." I was like, "All right, this guy's a studio. That's pretty legit." I go down there. It's like some pillow stuffed under the door, so you can't hear it, and like a bunch of dog pee in the corner. So it was a studio, I guess technically. That's what they're mostly like. But yeah. So you know. And we ended up, that ended up being... Star-crossed that, lovers, you know. That's right. It was like, you know, e-harmony does work, you know. And uh, Farmers only. Yeah, farmers only. And uh, anyways, but we ended up, that ended up being our band house for the next, like, I don't know, two years or something. And uh, in South Austin, at, in uh, Battle Bend is a neighborhood over by Hills Cafe. I don't know if you remember Hills Cafe. Oh, yeah. and. Coke FM used to do a bunch of stuff at Hills. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, so literally so much happened <laughs> at that <laughs> house and, and, and during that time, and uh, it's just a pretty amazing thing to look back and, you know, see it all. Yeah, who'd have thought, you know, at El Arroyo when you're sitting there playing those four-hour gigs that at some point your booking agent who would office right next to El Arroyo would have to take you to dinner there and stuff. Right, you know? yeah, exactly. Who'd have known that had happened? Okay, yeah. so I, I'm going to direct a question over there to Bennett. So what's what's one of your uh, favorite songs to play every night when y'all are out there playing? Like, like you pick one for whatever reason you would pick it and tell us about it. Try not to get fired here. Uh, <laughs> anyone I have a set list? Uh, honestly, I, I know Shane likes to play this at the end, but my favorite song to play is All I See Is You because everybody gets pretty crazy, and I get to act a little bit crazy too. That's right. <laughs> it turns into a fiddle. That's always fun. I'll save your job by when we edit the broadcast, we'll put this one at the end. How's that? <laughs> So Shane can't be oh, too yeah, mad. He's, I'll get talk, spoken with after this for sure. <laughs> A talking to. I'm fine with playing that song right now. I'm fine. Are y'all cool if we play that song real quick? All right, so this is another thing. And I'm not... <laughs> sorry, I'm, I don't mean to like just talk. I don't even know why I'm talking, but I'm not good at that either. But... Um, I gotta tell the story of this song. Uh, Bennett had a girlfriend when, <laughs> how do I start this? Uh, <laughs> Bennett, Bennett uh, called me one day. He was like, hey bro, I've got this song that I wrote and I wanna write, uh, I wanna it's record it. It's the only song it. I've ever written. It's right. The, Not it's, this song, but no, another no. song. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason. But it led to this song. So anyways, um, got this song I'm gonna, uh, I wanna record it. I know you know kinda how to record stuff on a computer and whatever. Well, you had a computer. Yeah, I had a I computer still don't, and some so. microphones, <laughs> right. And so he's like, can you record this song for me like acoustic and you know, whatever. I said, yeah. And so he came over to the house and you know, we recorded and I was like, yeah, sounds good. Um, that's a great idea. I haven't gotten anything for my wife for Valentine's Day. This is really bad. How is Bennett beating me to a Valentine's Day gift? And he's not even married and um, Anyway, so I uh, ended up deciding to write a song for my wife, and uh, it ended up being this, uh, All I See Is You. And I, you know, played it for her, went over great, she cried, it was perfect, did its job. And, um, but it was one of those things like, you know, we always, you know, songs that you write for me, we always end up like putting it on the radio or putting it on, you know, a CD or whatever. Let's just like, let's just like keep this one like, it's like my song, whatever, and we'll leave it at that. I was like, yeah, that's, that's sweet. I, you know, I like the idea of that. So we'll, we'll go with that plan. And that wasn't the plan that we ended up going with. And um, <laughs> anyway, so we get in the studio. We record all these songs, and we're like, holy crap, we really need another song on this record. This is not, you know, cutting it. And uh, obviously that song was like, I was like itching. We need to record this song. And um, anyway, so I talked to Lauren about it, and She's like, okay, all right, fine. You know, let's just let's just not make it like a radio single or something. Let's put it on the record. Let's not make it a radio single. Okay, no big deal. We'll do that. We recorded the song. Sounded really good. Uh, sent it to Angela Lampton in Nashville, our radio promoter at the time. She calls me right back. Okay, this is gonna be awesome. 
we have to push All I See Is You as the first single. And then the second single, I'm like, no, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. We can't do all that. And uh, anyways, long story short, my wife is the coolest person in the world. And this song has done a whole lot for us. And it, uh, it's about her. It goes out to her. This is called All I See Is You. Storms running through the Midwest Like a bandit out on the loose And all the clouds, they're black as a nightfall But all I see is you The rain's pouring through the window panes And the cracks of this room Tea's boiling from the spout of the pot, but all I see is you take It's like the knots in Salt Lake City Where the snow fell down too soon People laughed and howled from their beers, but all I could see was you. And I remember our first night abroad, the sun shaded ships with the moon. There was a lot to take in for some eyes from East Texas, but all I could see was you. It's all I ever see is you. One day when my eyes don't work like they should Just read the letters from large down to small But all I see is you and When I'm old in the weather And the winds of life that consume I pray to God the day I find my deathbed All I see is you some noise in this place. Keep it being with us and help us out. Go, 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 go. So, so, Bennett, do you prefer to listen to that on vinyl or CDs? Oh, man. CDs. 
for sure. <laughs> I try. I'm not, I'm not allowed I'm to finish going, that man. joke. <laughs> I, I think these guys. Uh, <laughs> he was telling CDs jokes up in the green room. <laughs> I was gonna see if he would play along, but yeah, he didn't. not doing it. <laughs> Our whole band is just like on this thing. And I'll just say what it is. It's, they just say, like, CDs or, like, something, whatever. And they'd be like, CDs, what are you, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, CDs nuts. <laughs> or, hey, what, what's, like, Shane, what? Shane, what's that band? What? Imagine, it's a rock band, imagine. No, then we're not going there. That one's too far. That one's what too far. It? Too far. Okay, no, 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 no. But, hey. It's way too you, far. You got to, uh, listen, listen. Keep they got to do something. Man. They have to do something to keep it interesting on the road. So tell, tell yeah, them the well, most. Yeah, well, apparently that's what's <laughs> interesting to them. <laughs> tell, them tell them the most Jesus interesting Christ. person on the guest list ever. Oh, yes. It, uh, uh, first name D-I-E-S-S, -S, last name K-N-U-D-Z. D's nuts. D's nuts. That's, that's what, yeah. Plus one. Usually and and that's literally one. their life. That's like how it goes. I don't that know. That was my greatest achievement was convincing our tour manager, Corey, to put... Yeah, Corey, back there, everybody. Give it up for him. Right, wave, wave to him, Corey. Give him a wave. Yeah, that guy put that name on our guest list at Texas Mardi Gras, and no one caught it. <laughs> literally two tickets never got picked up under that name. Way to go, Corey. You didn't want to pick You're up these You're killing it, bro. What's that? You didn't want to pick up these No, nuts? no. All right, get off of it. Let's get out of here. Move okay. along. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Jesus. We digress. All right. So uh, when did you write your first song? When did, you, when did you decide that you wanted to jump in and, and try your hand at songwriting? Uh, when I was like, I think, 15 or 16 years old, something like that. Okay, all right. And actually, I say I take that back. When I wrote, like, completed a first song, I think I was actually 17, 18. All right. Yeah. All right. And it's close. Huh? What what uh, do you remember, like, hearing a songwriter where, like, there was a moment where you went, "Man, I want I want to do that." Like, if I could express myself at that level, mm -hmm. then I I would feel like I've achieved something. Who, who was that artist for you? It was four guys. Um, it was Ray Wiley Hubbard, Hayes Carl, Adam Carroll, and Ryan Bingham, those four. And um, literally, like, I started, my cousin uh, introduced me to a lot of that music, and uh, the guy that ran our dorm, he was like our dorm manager or whatever, those are called, uh, <laughs> I don't remember, um, RA, thank you, yikes. At least he finished college, I uh, Yeah, well, thank you. It's the first compliment that guy's given me in a long time. No, but, he has uh, a great smile, too, come on, yeah. give it up. But, anyways, uh, uh, this guy named Jacob, that was our RA, um, at, the dorm uh, my freshman year in Tyler, Texas, at a junior college out there, Tyler Junior College. Um, he introduced me. He had a burnt copy of uh, Ryan Bingham's Mescalito album. And I looked into, you know, ended up listening to a lot of his old uh, bootleg recordings from, from a Wishbone Saloon record that he had recorded and, like, didn't really release to the mass public or whatever. And that influenced me a lot. Uh, like I said, Ray Wiley Hubbard influenced me a lot. Hayes Carl, uh, Adam Carroll. If y'all haven't heard of Adam Carroll, uh, absolutely check out Adam Carroll. He's, I think, like, like the most underrated songwriter um, out of this state that I can think of, literally, uh, in terms of like storytelling and stuff like that. I mean, he's just like a genius. And, uh, anyways, uh, and it, it's such a weird thing because it came full circle. Uh, Early on, after we started actually playing full band shows, uh, we ended up teaming up with uh, Ray's wife, Judy Hubbard, and she managed us for like a short period of time. And I think we were like too much to deal with though. And uh, <laughs> anyways, Ray uh, literally like changed everything about the way I play uh, guitar, like the way I finger pick. And he literally taught me how to finger pick like from the ground up. And that's one of those things like as you know, I mean, it just means so much to me because it, it completely changed my songwriting style 
based off of that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and so, anyways, yeah. But th I looked up to those guys so much. Well, I've seen you cover everything from Hubbard to Zeppelin, so I wonder if you would yeah. you would pick a song you want to uh, play from one of your influences. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, what are y'all thinking, Bingham or Hayes or what do, what do y'all want? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll do, uh, I'll do, let me do a Bingham song for you real quick. Here we go. Actually, no, I'm going to change this up. No, <laughs> because uh, we already had a Bingham song earlier. Yeah. I feel like Adam Carroll never gets played. Well, I'm going to play an Adam Carroll song. You still have to tell the story when you fanboyed Bingham at, uh, at the record store in Austin. Yeah, hey, Ryan. Antones. He, <laughs> hey, up. hey, Ryan. Ryan, me. It's me. <laughs> hey, hey, take a CD, take Ryan. Take a photo. Yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, I like handed him a CD, and he like, like, I think, pretty sure he probably threw it away or something in the next, like, five steps that he took. Um, but yeah, I did. I met Ryan Bingham. Like a leaning times. across security, like, hey, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think he was there. I think he like <laughs> fantasizes on this thing. Like. <laughs> but yeah, I totally fanboyed on Ryan Bingham one time. <laughs> and I almost got in a fight because I said this was a good song with a, a, another songwriter. He was like, oh yeah? We'll see who writes a good song and then stormed onto his bus. I was like, all right, cool. We're not gonna say who that was. No, nope. are we? <laughs> but this is uh, probably my favorite song written by Adam Carroll. It's called Rice Birds. Thinking of you, rice birds flew. When the frost dome came in the morning dew, you hear the thunderstorm raging outside my garage. You're the white shirt peeking through my camouflage. Oh. Thinking of you and I won't forget the tale of a turtle in biotech. I cannot dance, but I can hang on to some sweet memory up in over lunch. I was thinking of you. At the Mardi Gras, there were Fords and Chevys like I never saw, and I wish you were here to dance with me, just to hear this Cajun symphony. Thinking of you at the L.A. bar Where I got so drunk I couldn't drive my car 
And I was dreaming about you with my 10 ounce beer. So dreaming sweet daydreams, wishing you were here. And I was thinking of you when the rice birds flew. When the frost dome came in the morning dew Hear the thunderstorm raging outside my garage I hear the white shirt peeking through my camouflage I hear the white shirt peeking through my camouflage Great, that was great. Yeah, Adam, uh, when when uh, Dosi Do had a location back off 1488 for uh, a number of years, and uh, we did some of our shows over there, and Adam came and did the show, and he's just such an amazing, amazing songwriter. Yeah, yeah, he's Snow cool. Cone Man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, check out his stuff. I mean, like if you're at all into like storytelling through songs, I mean that's just like that's it to me. I, I mean, yeah. I think he's just really good at it. So. He is amazing. Okay, so we talked about uh, uh, new music and, and new songs. Tell you know, tell the fans here a little bit about maybe where you guys are in the process, and then I wonder if you'd pick uh, another song yeah. from the upcoming project. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so this CD has been, and by the way, I'm just I'm sorry that it's taken as long this as it one. has for us to uh, get this record out. It's like super embarrassing. Um, it's been, uh, it's literally been recorded for. Uh, almost a year, not like completed, but like to an extent, I mean, for the most part. And uh, it's just been a super frustrating ordeal, but uh, I don't know. We're, we're, we're literally within, I, th I would say, probably a month of music being dropped, you know, off of this record. So uh, I'm, I'm extremely excited about it. We got an opportunity to work with a guy out of L.A. Uh, it was the first time we've ever worked with like a major producer before. And um, if any of y'all have been to our like full band shows, it's just as much of a rock show as it is like a, a country show or a folk show or whatever. It's kind of a hodgepodge of like all kinds of different uh, genres, in my opinion. And um, and I think that that's exactly what this record is. And uh, this producer that we got to work with is a guy that uh, pretty much played a, a huge role in Imagine Dragons, the band Imagine Dragons getting discovered. Imagine Dragon D's. Yeah, no, no, no. There he goes. Jeez. This guy. This guy. He was waiting for it. Look at, like a predator. Okay. Anyways, but that band, as well as a couple other uh, indie rock bands like The Killers and, and a bunch of other folks. And... Uh, Anyway, so it was just a really amazing, uh, a really amazing deal getting to work with that guy. And I mean, Fleetwood Mac, I mean like a ton of people. And, uh, and he kind of, he wanted us to record almost everything live as we've been just touring really, really hard as a band. And that's what we're best at is just playing together on stage. And, um, and so that's what we did. We recorded the majority of the record live, like the bones of the record, if you will. And, uh, and it just kind of, added stuff to that but uh i'm super excited about it I'll, I'll play you one that it's another one that's a little bit down low i mean this setting here is like perfect for that type of thing and uh so i'm gonna go with that route if that's cool with y'all this was written off a of time that we spent out in ireland a couple years ago and uh we had a chance to play with a bunch of buddies out there in dublin and uh and it was a a good friend of ours, William Clark Green, if y'all are familiar with him. 
And we both, we all had the same day off. Obviously, me and Penn had had the same day off. But uh, Will had the same day off as us. And uh, we decided to get rental cars. They were, uh, he and his uh, bass player at the time, Cameron Moen, were going to go uh, to one side of the island. And then we were going to go this other route. And we were going to meet in Dingle, Ireland at like 11 p.m. And go out to the pubs and stuff. And so that was the game plan. And uh, anyways, we got there late, of course. And uh, he was already, you know, had a great time at the bars <laughs> by the time we got down there. And we didn't realize it, but there was literally like a hurricane blowing into Dingle, Ireland. And, you know, we just had no clue. And so we're driving into town. There's literally like on these little coastal highways, like waves hitting the side of our car. And we're like, man, this is kind of not normal. I don't know what's going on. I wonder if the weather's always like this down here in Dingle. And, uh... Anyway, so uh, long story short, it just ended up being one of the coolest nights in the world. We ended up uh, going out to these pubs, and uh, I felt like every other guy in that entire town had a black eye for some reason. I don't know. It was like, <laughs> it's just random. But um, by the end of the night, there was a lady that was like a professional singer that sang Gaelic, and we sang like Motown songs on a piano, and she sang them in Gaelic, which is like the native Irish language, and it was like my fantasy. So it pretty <laughs> much like, we were literally singing like Righteous Brothers on, uh, in, and she was singing it in Gaelic, and I was, thought that was just the coolest thing in the world. So anyways, but this song was written off of that night, and uh, it's called Little Bird, and it'll be on this next one. The night in Cary County had a mind of its own. There was a storm in the sea with a name. We laughed till we yelled as it ran to the pubs, as if somehow it could stop the rain. And you were hard to find a different kind I never knew. There's a thousand ways that I could say how much I loved you, but I lost the words, and you flew off like a little bird. So at east, outside the city, as you know my love, it runs deep in those parts. You came here to say you were living, but babe, I'd say it's living that got you this far. As you were hard to find a different kind, I never a thousand ways that I could say how much I loved you, but I lost the words. I still hear your songs, you little bird. As long as people sing songs, the stories live on. Nars had highs and lows, but it's real. And I'll be right here while you look for answers alone. Go find the life that you made in your mind. Tell the truth, I'll probably find a ditch on the road to Damascus. Babe, I'd be lying to say I'll be fine. Cause you are hard to find a different kind 
Have y'all had a good time tonight? Yeah. Let's go. Uh, let's go back to Geronimo and pick a uh, pick pick a song you want to play for us. Okay. Uh, all right. Oil let's town. see. Here. We got Oil Town, whiskey and water. We got. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oil town. We do. We can do Old Town. Let's do Old Town real quick. Here we go. Friday night sounds The coyotes are different They moan in the distance Their cries cast spells on the town But the boys from the rigs They had paychecks to show They made money and they spend it like hell They took their debt Pain and regrets, and they left them beneath that well. Oil town, oil town, you have black gold beneath your ground. Oil town, oil town, she's been awaiting, soon she'll be found. So she heard of East Texas Where the pine and the roses out there With the wind in her sails She cursed the midland to hell And she ran from all of her cares 
But the time passed her by like the dreams in her mind. She got a letter from her mother one day. Said the boys of KL just broke the shell to bring him to Midland to stay. Oh, royal town, royal town, you have black gold beneath your ground. Royal town, royal town, she's been awaiting, soon she'll be Now, in the in the interlude between Geronimo and the, and the new records, you guys have released a couple of singles yeah, in yeah. the not too distant past. Pick one of those. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> we did, like, it's the weirdest thing. I don't know. Uh, we've played that song for years. Uh, the song is called Hurricane, and it it's uh, it was written by a bunch of guys out of uh, I believe they were out of North Carolina and Tennessee, and uh, you know, it was like back in the 70s or early 80s, I believe, when they wrote this song. And, uh, you know, Levon Helm from the band, uh, he recorded it as well as, I think, somebody before him and uh, a few others. And Band of Heathens out of, out of uh, Texas actually made it like a well-known song and, um, and kind of like changed it up and made it this really cool thing. And kind of, uh, you know, we kind of, formed our version of it kind of off of their style of playing it and uh and i just thought it was amazing what they did with that song and uh we played it literally even off of sixth street when we were first starting as a band for years uh, we played this song and i don't know that we've like ever played it acoustic until last night and last night we had an acoustic show in alito texas or alito i don't know how to say that but um Anyway, somebody asked the same thing, so we ended up playing it. But we'll play it for you right now. This is called Hurricane. This is a brand new one. Try to change it up a little bit for you. Devil's daughter 
She's hot, she's cold, and she's bay. Nobody taught her. Takes a lot of water to wash away New Orleans. Sing it. Well, I was bound in the rain on the potter tray underneath the Louisiana moon. Don't mind the strain of a hurricane that come around every June. The high black water, devil's daughter, she's hot and she's cold and she's big. Nobody taught her. Takes a lot of water to wash away New Orleans. New Orleans. Have y'all had a good time tonight? 
Okay, I gotta. Add, are y'all gonna hang around and sign some T-shirts and yeah, yeah. vinyls and, uh, and CDs? CDs. <laughs> easy, Rod. Take it easy, oh, Rod. Oh man, um, sign anything. This, this uh, <laughs> we've got Corey, our tour manager, hidden away over there. Uh, he's got a massive merch set up over here. So uh, be sure before you leave, go give him, uh, you know, give him a thumbs up for killing it. And uh, we'll be over there hanging out and signing whatever, taking photos or whatever. So, uh, yeah, that's where we'll be after the show. So. Awesome. Well, and, hey, stop by on your way out. Say hi to the guys. Pick up a T-shirt. They, they got a bus to fix, all right? So let's help them get down the road. We need, a, we need, we need to lighten their load a little bit uh, by getting rid of some T-shirts and stuff and then put a little gas in the tank. So, hey, thank you for being here, man. Thanks for coming back in and doing the show again. And I, I hope we'll do it after the new record comes out. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I seriously, uh, and a shout out to this guy for doing this. I think this is the coolest thing in the world. I mean, seriously, like, uh, it's not very often you get to sit down and have dinner and like listen to these songs and, and listen to the stories behind the songs and honestly just have like a casual conversation with, uh, with you know, your some of your uh you know favorite songwriters and musicians and and st uh, you know storytellers so give it up for this guy you know for putting this thing together i just think it's the coolest concept and uh i i was seriously i, I look forward to this every single time we get to do it and i look forward to the next time uh, with the next record being out so yeah well thank you again what do you want to take us home with man you pick one you want to end with tonight uh I'll do, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Can I do two songs? Is that yes. too long? Is that okay? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> we know he's got nowhere to go. <laughs> you hang here with us. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see, I'll play you, uh, na name out, what, what were the songs that y'all really wanted to hear? Coast, a bunch of people keep yelling Coast, that's like a kind of a go-to song. I'll play you Coast real quick, uh, like a, you know, acoustic version of that, and then I'll do another one for you here in a second, okay, before we get out of here. I really, I hope y'all have had an awesome time. Thank you so much for supporting us. I need to tune my guitar, it's really bad. <laughs> so this song uh, is the title track to our debut album. And the uh, song is obviously about going to the Gulf of Mexico, for those of y'all who have had the uh, pledge, <laughs> privilege of getting to do that. Um, this song in this record was actually recorded uh, two different times. Uh, we recorded it for the first time in Lockhart, Texas, and, um, and then ended up uh, that's when we met Ray Wiley Hubbard and Ray Wiley Hubbard helped us uh, to kind of like re-record it with a guy named Bob Gentry that was my uh, original producer out of Tyler, Texas who used to play bass for Tom Jones back in the oh, day. <laughs> that would have been a cool gig. I can't imagine. Um, and anyways, but yeah, this this the record that this song uh, ended up being on uh, it was just such a long ordeal, and it took us like two years uh, to get it re-recorded and, and that whole deal. But it, it was the first single that we pushed out to radio, and it was the first time that we ever sold out a show outside of Austin, Texas. It was in Lubbock at a place called The Blue Light. And um, it was literally like immediately after we had released this song, uh, like two weeks after. Dave Wilde up, at, up, up, in, uh, up in Lubbock, Texas was spinning the hell out of the song apparently for us and we sold out our first one out of austin i just remember we were all just super pumped up as a young band uh, getting to have our first song on the radio so anyways but here is uh, coast for you
Way down south, the highland fades is a poor man working in a rice field maze, and a barefoot boy on a jetty plank as he walks to the gulf. And a light out shining out to the sea To a shrimper staring in disbelief At the mermaid saying he's got to believe That a light will take him home And by the Mississippi River There's a southbound train And it's headed for the goal Gonna buy my ticket and hold it tight Till I know I'm getting close See me running down the alley, way looking for the jetties, searching for my soul, you know. Oh, I bet it for the coast. Too many young people trying to run their life Too many rich folks trying to change their mind I'm tired of the hustle, get out of the bustle Every time I see the light And tell me, baby, you feel my soul I'm rolling with the rhythm on cruise control I got three chords and I speak the truth To Willie Nelson, that's a country song by the Mississippi River, there's a southbound train and it's headed for the goal. Gonna buy my ticket and hold it tight till I know I'm getting close. See me running down the alley, we're looking for the jetty, searching for my soul, you know. Oh. By the Mississippi River, there's a southbound train, and it's headed for the Gulf. Gonna buy my ticket and hold it tight till I know I'm getting close. See me running down the alleyway, looking for the jetty, searching for my soul, you know. Oh. Screw it, we'll do a couple more. This is uh, called Runaway Train. <laughs> this song is about getting out there, seeing some new places. That's what I say every night, for the most part. Uh, and I touched on that early, early on in this show. And... Uh, and we've honestly gotten to see a whole lot of places. We've gotten to play our first shows abroad in, in Ireland and as well as uh, Malaysia. We played a music festival out in Malaysia. 
and it was amazing. It was everything it sounds like. It was, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was like the coolest thing in the world. Um, but uh, it's just been a wild, wild ride over the years, and uh, and it's also about spending way too much money in airport bars, and I feel like everybody can relate to that to some extent. <laughs> it's like the rug that ties the room together every night, the <laughs> spending too much money in airport bars. Sunsets. We drank wine with some old Brits. They laughed at my boots as they had more holes in a fishing net, but that's fine. They weren't just fine. And I was born to run, so run I made. That sad look, that look on your face. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll close it out with one last one. This is another brand new one. It's kind of out there, and uh, and we. Uh, We've been playing at a lot of full band shows, and it's like, it's just a total banger. We kind of close out the night uh, with this song. It's called Heaven Knows, and, uh, but I'm going to play like a broken down acoustic version of that for you because there's just <laughs> no way of doing the full band thing with the two of us. But regardless, thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you all for being here, and I uh, and, uh, can't wait for you all to hear this thing. Once again, please make some noise. Uh, from my brother here, Mr. Bennett Brown on the fiddle. Left him at church. 
He, uh, yeah, he's, it's, it's a rare occasion that he's not in overalls, and so y'all are, you're lucky, you know. It's a dinner party, you know. At least try. Yeah, why is your shirt on, bro? All right, here we go. This is what I like about this show is uh, we play this song every single night, and like I said, it's uh, probably the most climactic song in our set right now as a full band. And this song was written literally just like this, and it sounded just like this whenever I wrote it. And I never get to play it like this.
Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Shane Smith and Bennett Brown. Guys, thanks for being here. Stop by and see the guys over here at the merch table. We've got shows coming up with John Bauman. We've got shows coming up with Jamie Lynn Wilson, Jack Ingram. A whole bunch of people are going to sit right up here and do what we did tonight. Check out your upcoming event sheet.